two half inch thick MDF rings have been glued to this piece. When the glue dries, I'll go back with the spindle sander and sand this flush on the inside. This is a Brevel motor. It turns 19 RPM and these came without a cooling fan but that's what this shaft is for. This is a cooling fan out of a computer tower. I salvaged that blade and made an adapter hub for it. I have a video on YouTube showing how to do that. And I made a motor mount using a bunch of scrap that was in my scrap bucket. The motor's mounted and it's running. This is turning 19 RPM. I kept the fan about a half inch away from any flat surface so I didn't starve the airflow. That has quite good airflow coming up through here. This part of the motor will get extremely hot and that will take the skin right off your finger. With that fan running you can run this continuous duty. Machined an adapter hub for the motor. There's two set screws that will tighten on the flat on the output shaft of the motor. I now have the frame spinning on the motor at 19 RPM. I'm going to put glue here, 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 and here. And turn this and pull it into the hole and that'll pull the glue into there. Currently I just have a little piece of bubble wrap that's in there. That's just to keep these cans from rattling around. I put in one. I put in the other one. This piece goes on there. And this screws right into that motor shaft adapter. And I take one of these and I push it up. People have had some interesting ideas on YouTube about how to mix a can of spray paint. I did not want to tie a can to a sawzall or a jigsaw. I did not want to zip tie it to the front wheel of my car and drive around the block a few times like one guy did. I can get tired of this real quick. One fairly effective way of mixing a chemical 
is to pour it from one container to another, back and forth. Essentially what we're doing here is just that. The fluid is going from one side to the other side. That side to that side. I have a very viscous material in here. This is fish glue and when it sits for a long time it develops a layer of white sediment down here in the bottom. I put this in here yesterday and that fluid is just going from one side to the other and back and forth. There's no marble in here to agitate it. It was just doing this on this machine and in a half hour it had stirred up and mixed all of that sediment and this is actually had become a bit frothy inside there. I didn't have to do this, didn't do anything. Just put it on there. And in a half hour it was it was good. You take that rolling of that paint back and forth in that can, coupled with that glass marble that's going back and forth, leave it on here for an hour or so, you're good to go. And it beats the hell out of this. Now I made this big enough to work and take two different size cans. I don't run across these very often, but all of these will fit. I made this out of MDF. This was a prototype. I wanted to see how it was going to work. As it is, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not real proud of MDF. MDF is brittle. It's difficult to work with. Um, it doesn't paint very well. On these, these rounds were just surface glued onto this piece here. That's not a good joint. That'll break right off of there. So I didn't show it in the video, but I drilled into the end of these and I put some of this bamboo skewer that goes up into here and pinned each one of these to this main part of the frame. And then these skewers going through here add a tremendous amount of strength to this where it, it can't flex that way. So this should last for a long time. And the two that come across here just pinch that can to keep that can from sliding back and forth. And that's why that uh, bubble wrap is in there. Actually these larger cans are a little bit bigger in diameter than the standard can. One more thing I want to do with this I'm going to mount this on a hinge so I can bring this up, load the cans, put the lid on it, set it back down against the wall. It'll be a lot easier to load than trying to balance these in here. Why did I make this so big in diameter and why is this hollowed out? The bushing on the output shaft is located about here. I wanted the paint and that to be as close to the wall as possible. The location of the motor is determined by the keeping this fan blade far enough away from a flat surface that it gets enough airflow. And by doing it like this, this is big enough here to clear these points of the gearbox and it keeps the weight pretty well balanced over that bushing. This whole thing sticks out about 8 inches to the outside of this knob.